No. Do you have a moment? <laughs> yes. Excuse me. In fact, how awful. Honestly, I don't know. That reminds me. Hmm. Got a second? Nothing to report. Got it. Hold on. Hmm. Huh? And that's it. Excuse me. I must be telling you. <laughs> Supplies are the lifeblood of any army. Bye. 
everything has its use. Oh. How wonderful! Hmm. Not exactly. My instruction comes at a high price. Taken hold of something. I'll add this to my arsenal. A useful skill. Neglect your daily studies. Hmm. Hey, by the way. Hmm. The short of it is. Uh huh. How 
may I help you? you. thinking. It is you. I wish to speak with you. sense. to assist with any matters regarding the facility.
Let me know if I may be of further service. Indeed. Care to make yourself useful? on you both let's get it done and you need me for this are you sure we all must do our fair share care to make yourself useful on you both bear witness to my true power yeah we've got this we all must do our fair share care to make yourself useful on you both sure that'll be no sweat I don't know how much help I'll be but okay we all must do our fair share can be the difference between victory and defeat. I am capable of so much more. Time to work you into shape. ideal match for my talents. I'll take what I can get. I didn't think I could get any stronger. I work to grow. Time to work you into shape. I've earned this. The more power, the better. 
Not that there's any point in me getting stronger. This should come in handy. Time to work you into shape. Can't wait to see how you do. Care to make yourself useful? I've got nothing to worry about with the two of you on the job. I do the brain work, and you do the heavy lifting. Just like when we were back at Abyss. And also like old times, we split the reward 50-50. Nothing like a little coin to warm my pockets. So warm it'll burn a hole right through. Well, don't come crying to me when you're broke again. We all must do our fair shift here to make yourself useful. Counting on you both. Sure, I'll help. I sure hope it's something I can actually do. We all must do our fair share. Care to make yourself useful? Counting on you both. All right, let's do this. My sword is yours. We all must do our fair share. Hunger is the true enemy. Yeah, the flavor's not really there. Who you eat with is more important than how the food tastes anyway. Wait, for me? Great. I love this stuff. Come back whenever you're hungry. Yuritsa? What's wrong? Not here, either. Hey, hold on. If you're looking for someone, I'd be more than glad to help. Uh, leave me be. Friendly as ever, I see. You know, it's kind of hard to believe you and Mercedes are related. Why don't you let me help you? You seem worried. How could you tell? You're not exactly hiding it. You nearly busted the chapel door clear off its hinges. Hmm. I'm looking for someone. She is injured. Huh? Did someone go missing from the infirmary? Wait, are you talking about an enemy? Not an enemy. 
However, she fled when she saw me. Well then, why would she run? Oh, I get it. Was it Bernadetta? Not her. Though, the one I seek was likely frightened by me as well. Well, you're not really the most approachable guy. There's kind of this murdery aura about you. Like, if I let my guard down for even a second, it'd be the last thing I ever do. That is not my intention. I know that, but you probably still scare the life out of someone who's already jumpy. Even a beast would turn tail and run if it caught sight of the Death Knight. Then... What would you suggest? I will never capture her at this rate. Your biggest problem is that you always look like you're out for blood. Maybe we should start there? Just try to smile when the two of you talk, and definitely don't look like you're gonna kill her. When we talk? Interesting. Time is wasting. I must go. Wait, Yuritsa! Huh. Is he really gonna be okay? Looks like something spooked it. What's wrong, little guy? Is someone chasing you? <laughs> Not that you'd be able to tell me anyway. <sighs> Yuritsa? What's wrong? Wait a sec. Why do I feel like this has happened before? There you are. Uh, yeah. What's up? Not you. Her. The creature who raided the pantry. Wait, you mean... the cat? She is swift. This is not the first time she has eluded my grasp. Not the first? Oh, so this is who you were chasing the last time. Yes, she was injured. I tried to tend to her, but she fled. Eventually, another soldier apprehended her. So that's what was going on. It wasn't a person who went missing, it was a cat. Now that I think about it, I don't know if you ever said she was a person. Sorry for jumping to conclusions. The fault is mine as well. My word choice was poor. Honestly, I'm more surprised than anything. Never really saw you as a cat person. I always thought your antisocial tendencies extended to everyone, human and animal. I only loathe people. I had a cat once, back at House Bartels, with my sister. No kidding. So they weren't always scared of you? No. However, the cat vanished after my mother and sister left. Perhaps it was frightened by the sight of me covered in blood. I'm no cat expert, but they say animals can sense danger. Maybe it could tell that you'd become a threat somehow. Uh. Eh, cats are fickle. Anyway, what do you plan to do once you've caught this bread bandit? Take her with me, and make sure she never steals again. <coughs> What's that supposed to mean? Look, you practically scared the whiskers right off her. I only planned to give her some food. 
I wonder why she was frightened. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a while till she realizes you just want to help. Search, boys! Don't let him get away! <laughs> they really are a persistent pack of scoundrels. <clears throat> uh, someone shot me! Yuri, over here! <sighs> I think we're good. They won't chase us this far. Looks like I was just in time. Are you hurt? So long as my face is fine, the rest of me doesn't matter. That's the real moneymaker, you know. And I appreciate the save, by the way. <sighs> you never change. Anyway, care to tell me why those thugs were after you? Oh, just a little disagreement among businessmen. Happens all the time. This is exactly why I said you had to find a different way to make money. If you're going to lecture me, I'd prefer the arrow you gave my friend back there. Also, if you disagree with my methods, why save me in the first place? You could have left me to reap the consequences of my actions and had one less villain in the world. I'm not lecturing you because I think you're a villain. I have no right to call you evil anyway. I just don't want to see you endanger yourself. Sometimes the only way to get anything done is by putting yourself in harm's way. You should know. Or, I suppose you wouldn't. What with your being an upstanding knight and all now. Trust me, I know. I can't forget the past no matter how hard I try. But I still think what you're doing is wrong. Not only are you hurting other people, you're disregarding your own well-being. I chose this life of my own accord, and I take pride in what I do. If I get hurt in the process, that's just part of the deal. And if I'm caught, and the townspeople hurl stones and fruit as I march to my execution, I'll still die with a smile on my face because... Okay, enough! This is the reason why I can't keep letting you do this! You want to protect the people important to you, right? Well, I want to make sure you don't end up dead and covered in rotting fruit. So if you still insist on being a reckless fool, I'm going to protect you anyway. Even though it means siding with a filthy villain? I'm not about to help you commit crimes. And if it looks like you're going to hurt someone, I'll do everything in my power to stop you. I just... I just want to save my friend, okay? I truly don't get you sometimes. Also, can't believe I'm going to fall for a cornball line like that. Did you say something, Yuri? Nothing. Forget it. at the moment, Annette. I was wondering if you might help me with something. I sure am. What's up? Well, I wish to conduct an experiment outside today, though naturally I'm a touch hesitant about it. Because your mood changes outside, right? Exactly. And though I'm deeply reluctant to experience that, one cannot make an omelet without throwing a few eggs against the wall. Well, I think you're a genius regardless, so I'm happy to help. No time like the present, right? Let's do this. Oh, uh, please stop pulling me along. I haven't even told you what the experiment is yet. Huh. 
Oh dear. Oh dear. Are, are you certain you want to do this, Annette? I sincerely doubt any magic built upon my crude ideas could ever work. Oh, it'll be fine. Let's get started. Well, if you insist, I suppose we must begin this foolish experiment. Hey, I forgot to ask. What is the experiment anyway? Oh, just a completely useless spell meant to gather cats from the surrounding area. Oh gosh, cute! What are you waiting for? Let's get started! Hmm, the spell seemed to go off all right, but nothing happened. <sighs> I knew it. I'm an utter failure. My research paper should be gathered up and used to wipe mud from the hooves of swine. Perhaps this is fate's way of telling me magic is beyond my comprehension and I was a fool to ever try. Look, moping about it won't help anything. So let's both take a deep breath and figure out what went wrong. Okay, I've got an idea. If we take the flower catalyst and use wind magic to spread the fragrance... Oh look, it attracts insects. Quick, grab that cockroach before it scurries away. It's clearly a finer sorceress than I. Ew, gross! But yeah, that didn't work at all. Hmm, maybe if we use this mineral instead? Goodness. The reflective light has attracted the attention of birds. And they're really mad for some reason. Run, Constance, run! Whew! I had intended that to be a brief exercise, but it proved to be quite the ordeal. Sorry that all my tinkering just made things worse. But hey, I did notice one thing. When those insects and birds showed up, there sure were a lot of them. True. Each attempt did seem to attract a single type of creature in unnaturally vast numbers. Does that indicate that the spell can indeed effectively summon a swarm of one specific species? It would certainly explain why the flower attracted so many bugs. Ugh. And why the light of the mineral called down such a huge flock of birds. <laughs> why, this is a magnificent discovery! I feel we're on the cusp of breaking new ground! Maybe it didn't go as planned, but I guess this turned out to be a pretty big success, huh? There's no time to waste, Annette! We must investigate the cause of this phenomenon at once! <laughs> yeah! I bet you'll create something revolutionary! Looks like someone beat me here. Hey, Yuritsa. You do know we're allies now, right? You could at least say hello. I suppose. Talkative as ever, I see. I take it you're here to train? Yes. You don't say. Well, this is as good an opportunity as any. Let's say you and I have ourselves a little duel. I've been itching to cross swords with you since we were at Garrig Mach. We never had a chance to cut loose and really fight, did we? They say the way someone wields their blade can tell you who they really are. So come on, show me. Ah, oh, very well. Draw your sword. You're not half bad. What? 
done already? Things are just getting interesting. This will not end until one of us dies. I have no reason to fight you. I care not when my life ends. But you, you do not wish to kill an ally. That's right. If I cut you down now, I'd never be able to face your sister. We'll have to save the real fight for another time. Let's call this one a draw. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just glad you were even tougher than I expected. Now I know why you were the weapons instructor. You'll have to teach me something new next time, Professor. I care not for jokes. Bad habit, what can I say? It's not every day I get to go up against someone as good as you. I look forward to our next bout. Just not to the death. Anyway, I'm gonna call it a day. Thanks, Yuritsa. This time. Well, if it isn't Barthus. What's wrong? That was a legendary sigh. Yuri, pal! Hear me out for a sec, will ya? They were these mercs, and I may have made a bet with them. Yeah, yeah. You lost, I get it. But we've got bigger issues to discuss. Must be a pretty big deal if it's more important than me losing my dinner to those mercs. It's come to my attention that one of my business associates is looking for a certain... giant broke fool. What? That's it? I'll just break him in half, and then we can move on with our lives. Not a problem. I figured you'd say that. Which is exactly why I came to tell you not to. See, this particular associate hires out quite a few of my people. I can't have a bruiser like you turning them into corpses. Can't I just rough them up enough to get them off my back? A few broken bones never killed anyone. Come now. You know there's no way I'd let you get away with that. I'd use every last one of my contacts to make sure you never win another bet for the rest of your life. Whoa, cut a guy a break, would ya? I wouldn't put it past you to actually follow through. I take it we've reached an understanding, then. I suggest you lay low until things blow over. Clear? Even after all this time, her ability to enrage people still manages to astound me. Hey, it's not as bad as it used to be. The price on my head's never been lower. On the flip side, the price for my skills has only gone up. I've been making money hand over fist as a mercenary. But the stakes keep getting higher and higher, so my pockets remain as empty as ever. I can't help but sigh in disappointment listening to you talk. You're seriously lucky I'm not happy, or you'd be neck deep in monsters. <laughs> Alright, I hear you. But enough about me. What have you been getting up to since you left Abyss? Oh, I just went back to my old gang. They were my home before the Officer's Academy, after all. But I still had to take on some mercenary work to keep my people fed and things running smoothly. It's been a rough couple of years, and thanks to that, my once stunning physique has been spoiled by all this muscle. <laughs> really? You still look pretty scrawny to me. Your skill with the blades improved, though, that's for sure. Well, when you're forced to fight, you either improve or you die. Still, I've got nothing on you. You practically live for a good brawl, after all. These fists have never let me down. No matter the enemy, I'm always the one who walks away. Say, Yuri. 
I just had a brilliant idea. I have a feeling I'm going to regret asking. But sure, let's hear it. If this associate of yours doesn't catch me, you and your underlings are gonna have to take responsibility, right? Most likely. I knew what I was getting into when I told you to back down. I've made my peace. Yeah? Well, I'm not about to leave my buddy Yuri holding the bag while I sit on my hands. Balthus? So, to make things fair, let's have ourselves a little wager to decide which of us is gonna take the fall. That way, if you lose fair and square, it'll give you an out, yeah? You'll have no other choice but to take your goons back from that client, and they won't get pummeled by yours truly. Problem solved! Hypothetically, if I were to take this bet, what happens if you lose? I'll do what I always do. Take my shirt off, jump out in front of them, and run away as they look on in awe. This is what I get for trying to help. You love taking off your clothes almost as much as you do gambling. No wonder your pockets are always empty. today. Thanks for sparring with me, Yuritsa. Though I have to say, we've faced off a few times now, but I still can't figure you out. Your skill is undeniable, but there's no emotion behind it. Your swordsmanship says nothing about you. If it's because you can't take it seriously, then you're welcome to come at me with everything you've got. Why are you staring at me like that? Don't tell me I offended you. Very well. Entertain me with your blade. <laughs> okay then. Let's do this. I knew there was another side of you. More. I need more. Satisfy my thirst for blood! Give me a break. Stop, stop. I've had enough. What? Unlike Yuritsa, the way you fight reveals a lot about you. I'm sure you're content just fighting worthy opponents to the death. But I have people I need to protect. People I'm fighting for. Life's too precious to waste on a fleeting moment of fun, Death Knight. That's why I can't be the one to kill you, like you so desperately desire. But hey, Bodlin's a big place. There's gotta be someone out there who'll give you what you want. They might even be closer than you think. You just have to look, right? Why don't you make finding that person your reason to keep fighting? All that said, I'm still a warrior. Nothing gets my blood pumping like facing a tough opponent. So while I can't help you put an end to your life, I'd be more than happy to help you live it. Until our next duel, Professor. See you around. I thought she, of all people, would slay the darkness that dwells within me. What a merciless woman. someone. You seem to be in a good mood, Burn. Ah! D Dorothea! You scared me! 
scared me! <laughs> Sorry about that. It just looked like you were enjoying your conversation. That was a man you were talking to, right? He walked away before I could see who it was. He, yeah but it's not like that. Oh no? It sure looked like you were getting along well. Who was he, hmm? Is spring finally springing in the heart of my dear burn? No, it's not like that! Um, do you remember the commoner friend I had once? You mean the one who vanished from your estate half-dead? Yep. Well, it turns out he's actually alive, and in our army. That's great, Burn. A childhood friend, thought past, reunites with his treasured companion amidst the fires of war. A noble daughter and a common lad. A love that knows no social boundaries. <sighs> this is the perfect plot for an opera. Yeah, that sounds impressed. Uh, wait, no, it's not love! <laughs> yes, but if they made it into an opera, that's how it would be portrayed. For example, there's a series of operas known as the Empire of Love, and their latest could be the Bernadetta Saga. Absolutely not! If that happens, I'll lock myself in my room and melt down the key! Then I'll have to keep it secret. A <sighs> shame, though. It's such a lovely story to waste. I'm taking it to my grave. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Still, I'm glad your friend is all right. Perhaps your father wasn't as cruel to him as wagging tongues would have us believe. Actually, he says my father was protecting me. I guess someone was trying to kill me, so he had no choice but to kick out my friend. Um, but... If that's the case, doesn't it mean you can patch things up with your father? No. My problems with him go way beyond this one incident. I mean, yeah. It seems like there was a bit of a misunderstanding around this one thing. But even if he was protecting me, it wasn't for love. It's more like how a smith protects a valuable tool. That sounds very much like my father. It does? Yes. He tossed my mother aside like some worn-out tool because their child, me, didn't have a crest. That's why your situation feels so personal. I really want you to overcome your struggles with everything that happened with your father and find a way to be happy. Um... But I'm already happy. Really, I am. And it's all because I have friends like you, Dorothea. Then I can be happy too. Because I have friends like you, Fern. can't get this poor thing to return to the stable. When I asked what was wrong, she said her stomach is in such terrible pain that she can't even take a step. Yeah, that sounds like a real pickle. If we could get her back to the stable, I could examine her and provide medication, but... Step aside, Marianne. It's Raphael's time to shine! I'll get your horsey back to the stable in no time. Yes, but, um, how exactly? Easy! I'll get her onto that cart over there and push her back home. But I highly doubt she'll be willing to get into the cart given her current state. Ah, it's fine. Just leave it to me. Good horsey. Good horsey! Just like that. See? It's not such a bad cart. 
And here we go! Thank you very much, Raphael. I gave her medicine, so she should feel much better soon. <laughs> it seems she wants to thank you as well. Oh, you don't need to be thanking me, Horsey. I'm just glad you're feeling better. I hope this isn't rude, but I still can't believe you were able to lift a horse with your bare hands. <laughs> your little horsey there was just the right size to wake up my sleepy muscles. So, what was wrong with her tummy, anyway? I fear she made a snack of some rotten fruit. Oof, that's rough. She's always been a bit of a glutton, I'm afraid. Still, I'm surprised she went so far as to eat something she found by the side of the road. Ah, uh, she was just hungry and eating what was around. Trust me, I know the feeling. I've eaten a lot of weird stuff before. Like what? Uh, I don't know. Old hard stuff, fuzzy green stuff. I think I ate some long wiggly stuff once. Goodness me! And you weren't sick even after eating all of those bizarre things? Nope. Oh, before the record, I only eat weird stuff when I'm really hungry. I wish this poor horse had a stomach like yours. Hey, if you want a strong stomach, all you gotta do is whip those gut muscles into shape! First you do a thousand crunches, give or take. Then you wolf down as much meat as you can handle. Do that, and you'll have an iron stomach in no time! Give it a few days, and you won't even notice when you eat the weird stuff. Um, I'm sorry, but I really don't think that's a proper training regimen for a horse. Hmm... Oh, that's right! Horses don't eat meat! But I'm sure she still very much appreciates your desire to help, Raphael. Oh, oh, what'd she say now? Yes, I see. Apparently, she's feeling much better and wants to go for a run in a large open field. See? She does want to work out! Come on, Marianne! The three of us are going running! 50 wind sprints around the field! Let's go! Wait, I have to run... wind sprints? Hmm? What's this? A stack of pictures? Let's see here. Cat, cat, cat. Scenery. Cat. Sure are a lot of cats here. Oh. And a picture of me playing with a cat. Happy? Hey, Iggy. What are you doing here? I, um, just had something to take care of. Nothing important, though. Happy? What are you holding? These? Oh, I just found them here. One of them is actually a picture of me. I wonder who decided to draw me without bothering to... You know, tell me. Yeah, that's not very nice. You know a lot about art and stuff, right? Any idea who might have done this? Well, it's not easy to determine an artist based on pen strokes alone. Yeah, not that. I wanted to know if you knew anyone else who drew stuff. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of cat pictures, so... Someone who likes animals, maybe? Maybe. I mean, it's a lot of cats. Hmm. <laughs> um, sorry I wasn't much help. Anyway, I should go. Wait, cats. I didn't mention the cats to you. Oh! Huh. <laughs> you drew these, Iggy. There's no way you could know about the cats otherwise. 
Um... You lied to me. I can't believe this. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I drew you without your permission. That's not what I'm mad about, Iggy. I'm just mad you tried to lie to me. You're right. I did. I'm sorry. I looked really cute in the picture, so all I wanted to do is say thanks. You... looked cute? Yeah. That's why I wanted to know who drew it. So you're not angry I drew you without asking? Pretty sure I just told you that. You're right. I suppose I misread the situation. It's fine. Can I have the picture? Sure. Keep as many as you want. Which battlefield are you headed to? Do my best. We will be making it through this. Are you all prepared to meet the enemy? It's Bernie's time to shine. Well, I'm gonna help, okay? I think this will go well. I'll lend you a hand, if that's all right. Watches over me. Can't 
swapping in. It's no use. We can't gain any ground. No way! Ready? <laughs> This stronghold will be ours in no time. I'm swapping it. Don't let it go to your head. Begin. The Sky Spirit watches over me. I'm prepared. I'll take your spot. Run for your lives! I'll join you. Let's finish this! 
What do you think of this? Yeah, you like that? You shall pay for this, you hear? Keep your distance next time. That's nice, I guess. Don't think this means you can make me do more. I work to grow. This should come in handy. I speak the truth. I would swear my life on it. Duke Iyer has become that horrible man's puppet, dancing in the palm of his hand. And his stewardship? Not but a farce to pacify the masses. Talus and his ilk are the ones who truly hold the reins of this empire. You mean the mages we saw at Aryan Road? So Duke Iyer's under their control too? Yes. And what's more, though you may find it difficult to accept, Hollis and the former Lord Arundel are one and the same. I overheard as much cross his own lips. Then it's as we feared. And what of Edelgard? Her Majesty? I cannot explain what has befallen her. She does as Duke Iyer bids her, and nothing more. Though, of course, Talus is the one whispering those orders to him from the shadows. She follows his every word, issuing his orders in her name. Now, surely I have shared secrets enough to earn my salvation? That will require formal deliberation. You may await your verdict from the inside of your cell. What? No, wait, there's more! Please, I beg of you! How much of Fenya's prattling do you believe? Certainly not all of it, but a great deal of what she said rings true. Lord Arundel's contributions to the church must have ceased because he was no longer Lord Arundel, but Tallis instead. It's almost identical to how the librarian Tomas was replaced by that dark mage. At the time the donations stopped, Lord Arundel was living in Fargus, having fled from the Empire. So Cornelia may have been the one who arranged to have Lord Arundel replaced. They were both deeply involved in the tragedy of Dusker. But to what end? Why would the Empire abduct the Queen Consort? There is no way of knowing those answers now. Not until we defeat Tallis and launch a full investigation into his activities. But I can say... Everything would be different if not for those mages. My father, his knights, the citizens of Dusker. None would have met the fate that befell them. <sighs> no doubt they had a reason for what they did. A sense of justice that rationalized their savagery, even if to no one but themselves. But we have the right to seek our own justice for those actions in the way we see fit. By the sword. We will prevail, Your Majesty. And we will finally avenge the dead. Once Talus is gone, we will finally be able to put all this behind us. And look toward a new future. Indeed. We will have no satisfaction while these demons still draw breath. If we ever hope to greet those we've lost with our heads held high, we must settle this here and now. Then we are all in agreement. Let us go. <laughs>